to language class. Today we'll be looking at lesson seven, and our lesson today is about telephone numbers. Okay, first of all, let's start out with just a little bit of review. What does PH and GH say? Let's say that together. PH and GH say, PH and GH say, what is the rules for doubling the last consonant? So we're wanting to add a suffix. What are the three questions that we ask ourselves when we're trying to figure out if we double the ending consonant? Okay, first of all, you think, does it have a short vowel? Does it end in only one consonant? And are we adding a vowel suffix? If you say yes to all three of those, you double the ending consonant and add the suffix. If you say no to one of those, you simply just add the suffix. Okay, let's look at our lesson. Telephone numbers. Today we will memorize our telephone numbers. It's important to know your telephone number if for some reason you should ever get lost somewhere. Maybe if you're in town somewhere or at a big gathering of some sort and get lost in public, um, you might have to call your mom or call your dad and find where they are. So it's a good idea to always know your phone number, okay? So if you're somewhere, you need to talk to your mom, you need to talk to your dad when you're not with them. Um, it's good to know the phone number because yeah, you may need to get a hold of them sometime. So it says your telephone number. Well, you don't have a telephone probably, right? And this is, you can ask your mom, what number, what phone number would your mom want you most to memorize? Maybe it's her cell phone. Maybe it's your dad's cell phone. Maybe you have a home phone. So you can ask your moms which telephone number she wants you to memorize, okay? So you're gonna memorize a telephone number. And it'd be a good idea to probably learn more than one. You should, you should know your mom and your dad's telephone numbers, okay? But for today, we're just gonna work on one telephone number. Okay, so you're gonna ask your mom, and your mom's probably gonna need to write it on a piece of paper or something, okay? For you to see, because you're gonna have to memorize it. <clears throat> okay, so, I don't want a telephone number on the board. Here's how your telephone numbers should all look. Okay, so all of your telephone numbers are probably gonna start with 812. 812 is part of the number, and that is what we call the area code, and it's where we live. We all live in southern Indiana, so our area code is 812. Now, if your mom or dad is from out of state, they might have a telephone number with a different area code from where they used to live. Okay, but if your parents are just from Indiana, your area code will probably be 812. Okay, so my phone number is 812-787-2981. Okay, so you're gonna have your parents or have your mom write down a telephone number that she would like for you to have memorized. And if you memorized one already, that's wonderful. And part one says, write your telephone number. Now, if you notice, it has these little dashes in there. That's just how you write a telephone number, and it is already there for you. You don't say dash or anything. You just read it like this. 812-787-2981. Okay? The dashes are just, they're there for you already. So, it says write your telephone number, and that it has the exact amount of spaces. So, it has three blanks first for 812 and has three more blanks, and then you write, and then the last four blanks, and you write the telephone number that your mom has for you to memorize. Part two says, write your birthday. Remember to use a capital letter and a comma. So remember how we learned to write your birthday yesterday? Um, be sure to use a capital letter on the month, and then write the month, the day that you were born, then put a comma, and then the year that you were born. Put a comma between the day that you were born and the year that you were born. Part three, match the contractions. Use your ruler to do that part. Part four, we remember. Mark the vowels, write the word, and add the suffix. First of all, you can throw in mark, either long or short. And then it says, write the word and add the suffix. It says, the vowel is short, double the consonant. So here you're learning that if the vowel is short, 
first part says with vowel short, double the consonant. The next part says if the word ends with two consonants or has a long vowel, do not double the consonants. So again, it's just telling you just a little bit differently, but you use the same three things. First of all, does it have a short vowel? Does it end in only one consonant? And are we adding a vowel suffix? So don't let that confuse you. Part five, underline the words you can name. Circle the words you can do. Okay, the things that you can name. When it's talking about something that you can name, don't change the word, okay? Only use the exact word. Don't add suffixes to the words. Don't do anything like that. Use the exact word that it gives you. Light. Okay, the first one is light. Can you touch a light? For sure you can, right? You can touch a light. It might be hot sometimes. Sometimes the bulb is hot. You can touch a light. A child. Can you touch a child? Can you touch cry? Can you touch cry? Or can you, can you do cry? Can you cry or can you touch cry? Baby. Can you touch a baby or can you do a baby? A bird. Can you touch a bird or can you do a bird? Can you sing or can you touch? Can you touch a sing? Can you touch sing or can you sing? Can you touch write? Now this one can might confuse you. This is not talking about writing. This is talking about write. Writing with your pencil. Okay. Not talking about your pencil. Simply talking about the motion you do to write. Okay. It's talking about write. Can you touch write? Now it's not talking about can you touch your pencil. It's not talking about can you touch the letters that you wrote. Can you touch right? You can't touch right, can you? Right is something that you do. We are writing. You're going to write, okay? Something that you do. It's not something that you can touch. So think through those carefully. Can you touch this specific thing or can you do it? Okay, think through those carefully. And you'll the words you can name, circle the things that you can do. Part six, put periods question marks, and comments. Now, when do you put a comma in the word? After what two words do you put a comma? We've learned that you put a comma after yes and no at the beginning of the sentence. Part seven, read the sentences. Circle the word that says whose dog. Underline the word that says whose master. So you're gonna underline and circle you're going to circle one word and underline one word that shows possession. It's a possessive word. How can we pick out possessive words? What do possessive words have? What do they end with? You think through that carefully and you circle the one that says whose dog and then circle the one or underline the one that says whose master. Part A says circle one to, sh circle one to show how the word sounds. So you have a word and you're going to circle the pronunciation. Be careful with ear and air, okay? Ear is I-R with a brief, ear. E-R with a brief says air, so be very careful with those. Part nine, penmanship. All right, line seven on page 45, a sticky taffy roll. So write that carefully. Also, I think on your penmanship, it has a punctuation mark, a certain little punctuation mark at the end, Put those little marks at the end of a sticky taffy roll. Watch carefully. Put everything that it has, everything that it has there, you put in your penmanship. Part 10 is spelling. The words holy, open, going, look, come. Color the spelling words orange. So you're going to find all of your spelling words in the little crossword search and color them orange. Part 11, write a sentence with a spelling word about the picture. So it gives you a picture there. It looks like that is a some kind of book or a Bible, and you write a sentence with a spelling word about that picture. Part 12, write the spelling words in alphabetical order. Unfill in the first letter if you need to, and get those words put in alphabetical order. Do your work carefully. Check over it. Use your ruler. Um, write neatly. Do your penmanship carefully. I have seen quite a bit of sloppy penmanship. Penmanship paper that you handed in, some of yours looked excellent, some of yours was perfect, and then some of you others have very, very sloppy penmanship. So take your time with your penmanship. 
Make sure it's written neatly. Don't go above the headline. Don't go below the bottom line, okay? So do it very carefully. Check out your work and yeah, I will see you in reading class.